approval of minutes. Has everybody had a chance to read through the minutes from the April 4th meeting? Okay, I'm looking for a motion. Okay, Don. Second. Okay. Discussion. Okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. At this time, I'd like to open up the public hearing a little bit earlier than planned. Um, and this is for the amendment of local law number one of, uh, of the 2000, can't read what I wrote here, 2008, that's what it is, 2008, which is to raise the building height from 35 to 40 feet, which is the regulation that the um, APA has. So with the public hearing open, I'm going to move on to Highway Randy. Okay, um, so things we've been doing, uh, raking roads, cemetery cleanup um, is in progress. The part of the fence was repaired at the Fish Mountain Cemetery. Um, the second part is going to take a little more to it, so we're going to wait on the second bar. Um, we'll get to it probably next month, or maybe the end of this month. The tennis nets are up at the <laughs> three courts, so that everybody would like to play it in the snow tomorrow. They can. Yeah. Just pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> well, couldn't get it any better. I put the nets up on Thursday, and in the snow today. Tomorrow. Good night. Um, in the bills, there is a uh, radiator that was repaired for. The so one piston bully, uh, the smaller groomer, uh, that was, we we knew we had a leak. We thought it was an actual, you know, O-ring or seal on the engine. We brought it in and realized that the fan was blowing it all over the engine and that was, so we, after we removed the radiator, found out that it had been repaired two or three times prior, um, prior ownership. And so when we brought it to the repair shop, radio repair shop, they said they couldn't fix it anymore and needed a new core. Oh. So we put a new core in it. Still was $800 cheaper than what Piston Bully wanted for a new radiator. Yeah. You know? And they were concerned about the two weeks it was going to take to do it. And I said, no, we, we have all summer. But they did it in two weeks and called up and said it was done. So. What's the warranty on a new? Um, I believe it is one year. No, this one's one year, but how long is the brand oh, new one? Oh, I mean, new one. New one is, I don't know, I didn't get that far. So, um, more than likely, not more than a year on any of their parts. Um, and. What year is that piston bully? 99. So, if it lasted from 99 to now, so now. a few repairs, it's. What's that? Or it's the start of the avalanche. Oh, no, 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 don't be saying that. <laughs> um, besides for that, the uh, groomers are all been taken care of now. Um, we do have two, two tracks, per se. One on the 200, one on the 100 that need to be redone. We have all the parts for the 200, the larger one. And I'm waiting for the spring sale to purchase the belts for the 100, which usually comes in June. Or um, that's all I have on that. Oh, and we tore apart 214, the first hand on the state road truck, um, and started its started and finished its spring cleanup and got it ready for summer. That being said, tomorrow we still have two tandems for the and then three pickups for plowing, so we'll still be fine there. Um, being that we are three men behind in this recycling day, we won't have had anybody for the trucks, other truck, anyways. So, and now, the next thing on my agenda here is bid opening for the gravel bids. Oh, and the 284 form. Well, we'll do that first. The Betsy has a copy of the 284, which is strictly this day agreement between board and I for what I was um, spending the chips money and uh, other 
DB monies on, um, which is the large proportion of it. Forty-five thousand is for regular maintenance of roads, gravel, so on and so forth. Um, One hundred and twenty-five thousand of it is going to re put a top on the first mile, one point two miles from Route Eight on Page Street to just past Moffat Speech Road to that first culvert. Um, sections of it by the corner store are breaking all apart from when Jack originally uh, tore it up and then repaved it um, 2009. And the other section, the next section is where we replaced the base last year from Somerville Trail Crossing to Moffat Beach. Um, so that means the top on it. The next line down is Gilmantown Road, finishing paving that. The uh, next 1.3 miles down to the town line with a base. So those, those numbers are hopefully high numbers that we're going to be spending. Um, but right now, blacktop is very volatile. Monthly, it's going up four dollars a ton on average. How much did you estimate for Gilman Town? One twenty-five, also. And it's more than not really so much a guesstimate. I have one quote in, and he put in what's es called escalation, and he put in the May escalation, um, which he's he's guesstimating it's going to be because we're not going to be paving in April, um, so. He highly suggests we get the Page Street project done as soon as possible. So it's on the books right now for uh, the second week of May. Um, the reason being is oil prices. I don't. He doesn't think, and I don't think, are going to go down that much in the asphalt world. Every summer it gets more and more and more and more and more at the end of the year. So. Usually it's 50 cents, 75 cents, so on and so forth. This year it's a lot more. So that's the paperwork for legal ease that we have to do every year. So this is Rhodes from Pasico, New York. And this doesn't have a name. It's from Tupper Lake. Oh, it's probably Mitchell Stone being it's up from Mitchell Plain. And this is Adirondack Portal, Portal Cluster. Okay. So we have three. Start with the smallest one. There are five, six types of stone I did put out the bid, um, and hopefully we have bids on them. So, from Chris Rhodes, Rhodes Construction, he included the whole bid. This is all the descriptions of stone. So the legal name, Evergreen Lake Incorporated. Mm -hmm. So, he did not bid on bank run sand. He did bid on screened, unloaded, nope, screened, loaded sand for snow and ice control at $6.80 a ton. He did not bid on two inch 
my and minus stone, either the granite or the limestone. He did bid on an inch and a half stone and minus uh, granite at nine dollars and fifty cents a ton. Should be it. There's more leaflets. So two types on that: six eighty a ton and nine fifty a ton. Correct. Screen sand at six eighty a ton and an inch and a half stone minus, which is your fine crusher run. Right. Um, at 950. I guess I should have brought my knife. They really sealed this. <laughs> That's so common with these. Mm. This, this one was what, Randy? This is, sorry, Mitchell. I'm assuming it's Mitchell Stone. I'll know more when I open it up because it's from 15 Mitchell Lane in Tupper Lake. In which, if you're on the road, it's okay. where Mitchell Stone is. Assumption though. Mitchell Stone Products, LLC. Alright, 
<coughs> Are we all good with this so far? Sure. This is Adirondack Portal Custom Crushing, which addresses in Warrensburg, but we all would know it as Dogtown. It is over. Baker's Mills. Yeah. The Baker's Mills would be your pickup. Yes. Yeah. say that uh, the Mitchell prices all have to have a caveat about the cost to you, time and trucking? Yeah. That's quite a bit more. That's quite a bit more. Um, it's a little more to Dogtown than to Evergreen, but uh, those are more, at least apples to apples. Yeah, they're more to apples to apples. Um, it's a little bit more fuel and so on goes over there to yeah. run out there. Yeah. Um, and but like you said, Tupper Lake is but we we send it out to a large page of you know, yeah. everybody in the county does. Sure. Mm -hmm. So right, but just like county in uh, of course the way you are in the county it makes more sense. With us, Tupper uh, they'd have to be some wild prices for them to be to Correct. be workable for you. They'd have to give it away. Almost. Yeah. Almost for us to go all the way up there. What are we paying for diesel now? Um, I just did this right on a bill. Um, the price? It is somewhere around $4. Yeah, so three ninety eight, dollars something like that. I just figured it out. Um, it went up starting in February. We just had the February fuel bills and it had already gone up. So yeah, it's fine. I think it went up $1.45 in February. So, but hopefully, and we don't pay taxes, so that right. Hopefully, yeah. yours will yours will level off if you see them on the roads now at five. Right, but uh, I don't think you're going to go too much further than four. No, I think for Siebel, still makes it still makes it thirty forty percent more than the worst in Yeah, it's a lot. 
Right. Well, uh, with, with Evergreen only bidding two of your needs, um, we can do this another way. I mean, we can. Oh, I had a resolution in which. Okay. okay. Um, Tracy Eldridge actually wrote this up for us. This right. is how the county does it. Right. Award of bids for stone, sand, and gravel items for 2022. Whereas Town of Lake Pleasant solicited bids for purchase of stone, sand, and gravel items for 2022, pursuant to invitation to bidders and in accordance with specification number 1 2022, dated April 18, 2022. And whereas three bids were received in response to the sand to the said invitation to bidders as follows. See attached here to and made a part of this resolution and will be put on file with the town clerk. Be it resolved that all bids for stone, sand, and gravel items for 2022 be accepted and awards made wherever hauling and loading expense and, qual and quality of product is most advantageous to the town of Lake Pleasant as determined by the highway superintendent. So moved. Okay, so that's Neil. Second? I'll second. Gives Randy a chance to ask what the difference is in the yes. basically. Yeah. Just Randy Clark launch. Yes. As always. Not carte launch. Yeah. Within the bids. Within the bids. Within the bids. Within the bids. Going to figure out them. According to the variables, the quality that he sees in the first uh, delivery. Well, if I was to go to the biggest thing that we're in discrepancy of here is the screen sand, I would probably go over there and do an inspection of the sand before sure. we started hauling it over here. Mm -hmm. um, like I've done now for all the crusher run and everything else. Right. Go with and then send a truck and see what it's going to cost to run a truck over there and back and forth with fuel um, to see what the actual end of the day cost is. Of course. And it's just worth it. This That's resolution crazy, basically yeah. just says when I get done with all that, we'll figure out what's the best for the town and right. go that way. And then these are all on record. Right. You said there were six different types that you wanted bid? Correct. So I only see five. We have bank run sand. Yeah. Screen sand. Yeah. Bank run gravel. Yeah. We have two minus, number two minus, which includes everything, in the granite version and then in the limestone version. Ah, that's right. Then we have inch and a half minus in the granite. Okay, I didn't hear anything that had to do with the limestone. Mm, right. It's so nobody nobody bid on that at all. That's because some of the quarries mostly northwest of here, Barrett and them, they have that option when they blast or whatever. So there's other quarries that only have limestone. That the county deals with north of here, northwest. Of here. We in this area it's almost all granite. So let me bless. But you would be no hardship if, if you didn't pull any of that. No. There you go. I definitely don't want no. don't need or want any of that stuff. Where it's, is this header on deck in Baker's Mills? You know, um so right on the main road there? Yeah. When you leave uh, Weavertown and you're coming back this way, mm -hmm. there's a great big sandbank on the left, mm -hmm. and there's a stump pile on the right, and there's a whole bunch of old, 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 old trucks. Yeah, you guys know. That is them. They used okay. to do inspections there. Yes. An enormous on property on both sides of that. He's cleared it yep. so much in the last 10 years. Yeah, they're, they're, they're expanding. Yeah. I don't know what's going on down in the hole, but yeah, you've got to figure out the mining permit. Yeah. So, that's where they're at. So you're basically just going to have to figure out expenses as far as man hours, trucks, cool. fuel, wear and tear. Yeah, to go there and back. Yep. How much longer it would take to do it than to drive to Pasico and back? Four to thirty cents a ton. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, more than likely, history tells us anything, most of it will be drawn from the closest local. Right. And then 
you know, unless the price differentials are enormous. Otherwise, this gives him an idea of what he can draw from the next losses and so on. When you have a bid that only has one person bidding on a particular thing, such as the bank rack, run gravel, mm -hmm. what do you do? You take it. Take it. We have Same. no option because it's, we've put it out there, we've done our due diligence trying to get somebody right. to, and then. Right. If you need bank run and you take the bid from Evergreen, if you need bank run, you go to Evergreen. Yep. That's where that, leaving that open is kind of the best way around. So the big deal is the snow stands removed. Right. That's our. That's the big thing. Yeah. Most of right, the most of it. We we purchased about twelve thousand dollars a year of that from Chris in the past. Send that staple away. Number the budget for the longest period of time. Uh, we definitely purchased more stone and stuff for other companies, but it's for paving and all that kind of stuff. So, but we can still get that off the county bid. Okay. So, is there any further discussion, guys? Anybody have anything else to want to add? Or? Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. What do we have? Nothing on the buildings? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, old business, the museum fundraiser. We are now up to $26,762. Um, I heard from Chris this morning and she's asking the board's approval for her to apply for a grant through National Grid, um, which the museum would, would uh, fit their criteria. So we have um, me and Sabe. I had to take pictures with my cell phone and email myself so I could print them. Um, you know I did it. Uh, yep. Um, and this, this is, this is um, the criteria. The neighborhood investment program um, and what kind of projects qualify cultural institutions such as museums, libraries, performing arts, etc. Um, so if the board has no issues, I'll let Chris know tomorrow. Wonderful. Okay. Does she want a resolution? Uh, Not necessary. She's, she's given car blocks to do as well. Yeah, for the museum, yeah. Apply for as much money as you can, I believe, as well. Yeah. Um, Beach High Report is tabled. I have not seen by. Um, and also the Community Gardens Report is tabled. I have not heard from them. Um, LPSA Lake Stewards. LPSA is still looking for one Lake Steward. Um, it could be, you could even be two part timers and split the hours. And I actually have from Tom here somewhere. It's D. Somewhere. I'm going to read you what Tom said. Okay, also the Town of Lake Pleasant and the Lake Pleasant Sock and Dogger Association are still seeking one or more candidates to work part-time this summer as a lake steward to monitor boat ramps at lake, on Lake Pleasant and Sock and Dogger Lake. Interested candidates should contact Tom Rapieri Rip at tomlpsa at yahoo.com. The part-time work could be from 8 to 36 hours per week, depending on how many hours the candidate or candidates want to work. So that was from Tom. So that's where we stand with the LPSA. Um, pathways, um, Randy talked to Dave McComb. Uh, Dave stopped in this week and talked to me as well to ask if we could get a new sign. We have one that said, one here that says no trespassing. The other one here says, no hunting, no trapping, no camping, and no fishing. Dave would like to see one sign because it's kind of <laughs> turns people off and confusing. We'd like to see one sign that just says no hunting, no trapping, and no camping. He doesn't want to stop people from fishing. A lot of times grandpa goes, you know, they go back to the picnic area and grandpa goes with the grandkids and fishes. Yeah. And he thinks it's a great opportunity. So he didn't want to see that on the sign. Um, so Randy contacted DEC. Did you 
I haven't heard anything since okay. that day. Um, the DEC, yeah, was willing to uh, make up a, a couple signs for us. Yeah. Uh, I had to do some twisting of the arms right. and twisting of the verbiage, but to make that sign, those two signs up, without going through a lot of bureaucracy, should be being made up. I haven't heard any issues, so uh, normally how this happens is they show up at the doorstep. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, that's great. So they are replacement signs. In a town park. Yeah. Oh. Nice to hear. A note on that, I walked the pathway today and I saw the no trespassing sign and I, I kind of scratched my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dave said there were a few blowdowns. Why we're not going to include that. Yeah. He said there were a few blowdowns, but really nothing crazy, nothing really, a tremendous amount of work. He said things look good. Yeah. And when he gets back from vacation, he'll be pulling the signs out because he washes them first before he puts them back up. The boardwalk needs a little work. Perhaps yeah. that's something major. Good. Good. Anybody want to add anything else to that for the pathways? Only if, if I'll reach out to Dave. Once a work day from down on there, something we can't. Great. So you'll do that? Our building that we painted last year was wonderful. Hold well, up. I, I, I noticed it. <laughs> and there were people using it today. Oh, yeah. Even though so. the no trespassing sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next is new business youth recreation aid, and I'm going to turn that over to Kathy. We've had one application. Um, I'm going to ask that we table at this time because I'm waiting. Michelle's away and we're waiting for um, the references from local people to respond. Okay, it makes a lot of sense. I reached out to both local agencies mm -hmm. and I'll follow up because I don't hear from them after the vacation. Okay. The, the week that everybody flew the coop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, next is Office of the Agent. Finally, finally, finally got the contract in the mail. Of course, when I was away. Um, so it has to go through the board. Everything basically is the same. There's couple of different things like um, doo -doo -doo -doo. like now I have to do a quarterly progress report covering the achievement of the program goals and objectives and all personnel, administrative and other transactions which will serve to describe how the program has operated and succeeded in providing the services described in this agreement during the program year. The report will be provided within 10 days following the end of each quarter. So I will have to reach out to Pauline Slack mm -hmm. um, for some information on that. But in the meantime, when I was on vacation, I did um, get a call from um, D Parks. Um, and D is actually the director for Warren Hamilton County's Office of the Aging. And I'm actually going to read it. Good morning. I just left you a voicemail, but also wanted to follow up with an email regarding the transportation program. We received a call from a resident of Wells who had called to reserve a spot on the bus in Lake Pleasant. And I'm not going to use names here. She was informed by an individual, I believe this person is from Paseco, that she could not ride the bus because she was not a resident of Lake Pleasant and also because the town of Wells didn't give them any money for the bus trips. So Dee called this individual from Paseco and also left a message for Pauline Slack to remind them that the transportation program for any senior who is 60 years or older, regardless of where they are from, they can even be from another state, and that is, the town of Wells does not have to pay for their residents to ride the bus that is sponsored by Lake Pleasant. This is the same if the resident of Lake Pleasant wished to ride a bus that was sponsored by the town of Wells. If the bus was full, however, then priority would go to residents of Lake Pleasant. I know you care as much about the seniors as we do here at the Office of the Aging, and the important thing is that they are getting the opportunity to do things. If you have any questions, to please feel free to call her. Um, 
but that was from Dee. Um, I just thanked her for letting us know um, that I wasn't aware of the situation and that I had hoped to get clarification. the clarification cleared up. Um, I have not reached out to anybody from the seniors at this point. Um, I know Dee said she already did, but I know I'm going to have to, but I wanted to just bring it to the board to just get everybody's I, I, feeling on this. Well, I, I received a call in your absence. Um, Pauline, as the ERSAT's leader of this group, was agitated that this continues to crop up from time to time and wanted me to make some sweeping edict that it could never happen again. Um, and I said to her, I would look into it, I would inform you on your coming back, but that um, more than likely, uh, the pot of money being coming as it does, it would not be something we could, we could enforce. Right. Um, we had looked at this for uh, years from time to time, um, but I hate to see the us versus thems, but it does pop up. And um, I said, well, Ian, I don't think there's anything wrong with you asking whoever your counterpart in Wells, um, senior group, to ask if they wanted to pony up or have the town cooperate with our town. But um, this is not something that's a straight, it's not a pass-through either. I mean, when we do get money and send the money back out for this, um, but I was pretty certain that this is the way it was going to come back yeah. when Ms. Parks finally got back to you. Um, it is what it is. Um, I, I guess I'll just quote uh, Ronnie King. You know, why can't we all just get along? Um, I haven't seen a full bus in I don't know when. And, and honestly, we've been getting five, six people. But that usually is like one or two from Paseco as well, mm -hmm. which is at least we're getting people to ride the bus. Right. And I talked to the supervisor in Paseco, and we're trying to figure out a way that we could get more people on these buses to make it worth our while. We receive $1,100 a year from the grant as a refund from this. I just finished the first quarterly report that I have to send in tomorrow, and it's almost 2,400 for the first three bus trips. Um, I know it adds up, but it's our seniors, and we have to do it. it. It's a lot of money, but we have to do it. So wouldn't it be better if we had more people riding the bus, no matter where they were from, than just having five people on a big bus? And now, we did have this discussion, I remember at the last meeting, Kathy, you and I were talking about it. Um, according, from what Pauline told me uh, two weeks ago is that if they only have a few people and they have a small bus available, Brown sends the small bus, not the big bus, and they only charge for the small bus. Um, she said and most of the time they only charge for the small bus even if they send the big bus. So, I mean, they're trying to be fair. Yeah, and, you know, we're... <laughs> We have counseled or cajoled or whatever with the seniors for many, many years to use this money that the town provides for senior cultural experience to be something other than these bus trips, which can be sometimes, oh, eight, nine, ten of them sometimes um, across, you know, they use up the whole budget on buses. Um, and I've tried to do it through the leadership through other seniors to see if maybe they could have that change. But regardless, uh, as long as we're taking this stipend from OFA, it's it's hard for us to act the same way. It's not the same as like doing the ski lessons or things like that, golf lessons where town Lake Pleasant voters are, are, are paying, the whole taxpayers are paying the whole shoot match. And if we want to put certain codicils in there and restrict restrictions for other out of town or whatever you can do that this is mixed money and um, we really don't want to end up losing this and i think their message is try to get them to mix and match and yeah. and get along wells has a very active senior group and uh, maybe some of our seniors could then latch on I mean, lenny was the last one i know that did a lot of that uh, but um, it is what it is, and it's not what Pauline wants to eat. Yeah. Uh, they've become very set in that 
Scott. And I did call the well supervisor this morning, and, and we talked for a bit. Um, unfortunately, his account clerk had had an appointment and had to leave, so he couldn't find the paperwork. The only thing he could find is they pay eight hundred dollars a year for travel expenses, but that was he was looking at his budget from last year, and that was for the meals to be delivered from Wells up to here. Right. Um, and that they have a grant through Office of the Aging to help with the expenses of that. But as far as the bus, he didn't think they had anything with that, but I won't know until tomorrow on that. As long as no one from, and that's, I thought that's how I left it with Pauline, as long as no one from our town is being put off the bus by huge amounts from others, right. this really is a non-starter. Mm -hmm. um, and she, well, that could happen. So well, then it becomes first come, first serve. That would be great. Yeah. Wouldn't we all smile? Yeah. The first come, first serve. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, now that I brought it to all of you, I will definitely um, call Pauline and talk with her and try to figure out how this other person from Arietta got involved to take a stand on this. I, I She mentioned that in the call, too. There was someone who's been designated as... Okay, the, is that what it the is? The bus whip, you know, uh, making sure that, that, that folks reserve ahead and so on and so on. Um, and that's, I, I tried to get the logic there, but well, yeah. she's from Pasico. Exactly. Why, why are the people from Wells of a different color? Um, but it's, uh, these are old standing things and uh, I think some uh, misunderstandings of, of the funding and how this works. And, and I think it was a bump in the road and I think that D took care of them. I will call and talk to Pauline Good. tomorrow now that we all understand the situation. Um, and let's just move on from there. There you go. Okay. So that's that. And then the next thing I had kind of mentioned when Don and uh, Neil were in the office is the senior Part B refund. We refund $96 a year to all our retirees. I, the only way I came across this was looking back through some of my old files looking for something else. Um, um, so we're going to have to send that out this week, but possibly this year through our budget uh, sessions. And when we sit down with Brian Moult, insurance agent, uh, we can talk to him and um, figure this out if we are going to continue it or if we will stop it. Um, you send $96 a year. Per retiree. It, it, was, it was a concession to the retired seniors, re town retirees. For a bump in, in well, you're, you're just a recent, uh, five years. Yeah, but he, is he, he's not 65 yet. <coughs> That's why. That's why. That's why. That's but it was, a, it was a concession over. for these folks, because you see it's a Part B, it's a Medicare deal, okay. uh, that um, somehow left them feeling as if they were paying more uh, at the turn from 64 to 65. It's been around for a number of years, um, and when it's discussed, every time it's discussed, it uh, fills the town hall pretty good with the, those same recipients. Um, I suggested to Betsy there's no reason to change this this year in, in budget time, but maybe have a, another counseling session with Brian Moult, as we do from time to time with our current employees, uh, to see whether this is something that we can um, write out of the budget for subsequent years. We've got to hear from all the affected parties, but uh, for now, I, I've, my guesstimate was um, seven, eight people that are, that, that are receiving now. I have to know. It's more, or a lot more. I had, I had a list. I have a list in the office. There's a lot more. Really? Yeah, there's quite uh, And here's one. <laughs> Point zero zero. Ninety-six dollars. This it was basically to replicate a monthly hit that they were going to get. We could not make them whole. Uh, we, I say, I think this goes back even before me, but um, certainly it's something that's been sort of a counted on now by by those same seniors. So certainly not looking to pull the rug out, but we will look at it in the upcoming year. I was actually surprised when I got it. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The person's called twice now. Yeah. You can... No. Yeah. Try hard. 
Um, but it, it is that time of year that. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that, mm -hmm. and we'll be looking at that budget time, and when we sit with Brian Moulton, yeah. discuss it, and, and if we decided not to go with it, that would give us plenty of time to get a hold of the retirees to let them know before 2023 starts that that will no longer. But this could possibly. There's been a myriad of changes one. for the coverages that both the the working staff and the retirees uh, have. So it's only fair to look at it to see if uh, this is something that's, that's additional we don't need to do. Don isn't going to sleep all night tonight now, are you? He'll <laughs> be at the meeting. Nice. Don't you worry. I'll be there. Okay. So next is a resolution for the assessor mileage. And before I read the resolution, I just want to explain to everybody, we did have a line for the assessor, um, but that was for travel and conferences which now that we um, actually are, are um, contracted with the county, the county takes care of all the conferences and stuff. The, the travel expense is basically when she has to go on site, you know, from town hall to somewhere to check out and, and do her job. So the line that we had had been inactive for over five years. So if you remember correctly, last year we did right, away right. with a lot of lines. Right. I mean, they're still available and we can pull them back up sure. and into the budget. But, um, so, this Lake Pleasant Town Board to approve mileage for assessor. It's, um, whereas this resolution is to create a fund, a new line, A1355.401 assessor mileage, taking $500 from contingent line fund a1990.401, whereas $500 from contingent line fund A1990.401 will go into the new line A. <laughs> we'll go into the new line A1355.401 for the town assessor to use for mileage purposes only. I will hold it since I broke your tone. Okay. This. I'm oh, sorry. Wait first. No, go ahead. I'm waiting for a second. Okay. okay. Kathy, okay. This, this of course, uh, there was a time when we had this line and, and Vicki would use it um, actually for both, for assessor and for inspector. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been relieved of the training dollars, which are quite a bit more okay. through this contract. So I think we're, we're a net plus here to our, yep. our bottom line. Absolutely. And I have to tell you, she's doing a great job. She's in the office. She set the hours and she's in the office every Thursday. She pops in quite frequently for time here or there to touch base with Steve on certain things. Mm -hmm. um, but she's a pleasure to work with. Good. She really is. Um, so is there any further discussion on that? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that's done. Okay, next is committee reports. Do we have any committee reports, Don? I have nothing to report. Nothing. Neil? I would just say that um, our highway building committee will meet with Randy on an uh, interview this week for hopes of landing one of the much needed staffers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kathy, you 7 o'clock in the morning. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't either. So next I'm looking for a motion to pay the bills uh -huh. uh -huh. for April 15th. So we need to move it and get a second and then discussion, okay? First, someone want to move it? Move. Second. Okay. Okay, and Neil, go ahead, Kat. Discussion. One of the bills, back to the senior citizens, mm -hmm. um, it requested a payment of $5,000, quote, per agreement, um, parentheses, meal site, unquote. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stuff. Is that a year? Is that quarterly? A year. A year. Okay. okay. So that's for the year. Yes. Every year, we give them a check for $5,000 to help with their expenses to keep the meal site in operation. Okay, so this is per Keep, year. Keeping in mind, Kath, again, we're just covering this for, for yours and anybody else's. The town, the, the senior center is not a town no, asset. It's not. Uh, they are an independent organization. I don't know if they're 501c or not, but they're an independent organization. Um, but for a number of years, the boards have felt something towards uh, towards them is important because we are required, we the town, to have a site for meal. So since this is a symbiotic relationship, uh, the town pays that money and they put it towards 
lighting and uh, you know. Yeah, the, the I, just, sure, I just sure. I just having being new. I didn't yeah. know what yeah. the agreement was. Yeah, that absolutely. Was five thousand dollars flat. Absolutely year. appropriate. Yeah. Five thousand a year. Got it. Okay. Next public comment. Nancy. Well, did we call the note? Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, uh, right. Any opposed? Next public comment. John? Have we? No. Nothing better to do than I have Okay. How about round table? Don? Uh, no, I can't say I've got anything. I, I see work has started at the town building on the gardens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's looking good so far. Mm -hmm. Waiting for Mother Nature to decide if she's actually yeah. got something. We're going to get some poor man's fertilizer in there, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they say they're Yep. Can't I, before, you, know, you know what's funny, Neil? You know, before today, I had never heard that. Is that right? Scenario. It's a farmer's term. I've heard yeah. it at least from four different people today. Yeah. Well, we don't have a lot you of You never farmers. heard of that before? Oh, no. Nope. We grew up in farm country. I've been here yeah. for years, yes. Randy. Yes. yes, absolutely. Us farmers, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. Old Trust me, I had a farm right next door. I know yeah. all about that, but that would never be heard of farmers. I'm more of like, when did the golf courses work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, there's a nothing on today. Happy? Um, the wreaths across America wreaths are on my list of getting out of the way of the guys. Gone. Oh, you beat me. Good for you. All gone. Sorry. Last Wednesday. Okay, so I can still do Speculator and I can still do Seeker. Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> by, the time the, the, by the time it opens, we don't have it. Thank you. Not a problem. That's it? That's it. Can I circle back? Yep, yeah, circle back. Did we have a, a final day for Kevin? Yes. April 8th? Is that what going to be? Yeah. So he's you wanted nothing, it was... Okay. I see you later. It just dawned on me that... I'll come back Monday for my check. There you go. Well, that's very good. All it was. Good for him. That's what he wished. Best yeah. wishes. Okay. Yeah, right. Don't we all wish we were there? Mm. It's fun, right? I've been there. So, yeah. A couple okay. times. Um, the only thing I have is I just wanted to let everybody know we received a yearly rent check from Verizon Wireless for the 2400 and I was a little confused because we already got one back in the late fall, but the reason for that is, no, as I read the contract, what it stated was is once, once the equipment is on premises, that's when the year starts. So, because they had started it last spring, summer, whatever, that's why we got that first check. So now this is considered the second year. Cool. It's once a year and you pay it in advance. Oh, I'd like to circle back on something. Oh, there we go. Oh, right on. Right. A couple of meetings ago, Randy, you said you messed up the state DOT. Mm -hmm. And they said that the... Uh, Route 830 north and south there mm -hmm. was going to be paved by mm -hmm. July 4th. Is that mm -hmm. still, yes. as far yes. as you know, it's still on board? Still, still, still is going to happen. Um, they just, <laughs> the state swept the road. Obviously, this little setback, setback is not going to be good for it. But um, it was let out. All the contracts are out, so on and so forth. I expect probably the first or second week of May you'll start seeing mm -hmm. things. Strictly a roll of the dice. Right now, the state in Indian Lake has a massive amount of COVID going through. Hmm. Um, and t today's, or tonight's conundrum, yeah. they had all their trucks unsuited and wells, and then they think also in Indian Lake, so they could start doing work. And now they're all nicely put, being put back together. Is that done Mother's by the exactly. state, mm -hmm. or is that done by private? Oh, it's all private contracting for certain things. But if you remember, I don't know if you saw it, when they did the first section out of wells, the state was going ahead of them, filling all the potholes, right. everything else, mm -hmm. because where they're doing the superheating, if you don't have anything in the hole, it still creates a hole, yeah. sure. because you can't make something up that's not there. So they have to fill it in directly in front of it, and so they have the right quantities, and then level that out. 
certainly needed. So mm -hmm. yeah, forward to it. Absolutely. I was just uh, curious because I looked on the state DOT site about jobs and it's not mentioned there. Really? Yeah, it's not. I have been told numerous times and all that I've seen everybody, everybody including Utica on this and they in they the uh, Well let's hope. Circling back around again. <laughs> I'm seeing all of the, the cones and That's over good. the bridge hangings. Uh -huh. Who's doing that and what are they doing? That is the Utica DOT bridge crew. Yeah. But what I didn't want to stick my nose into it too deep, but they are repairing the underside of the bridge. Some of the concrete is yeah. not up to spec. And they actually had a portable cement mixer there that they were mixing cool. it. Yeah. Did they have two? I saw one. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty neat, really. Little thing. Shooting a little mm -hmm. tiny electric yeah. portable cement mixer, mixing mm -hmm. in there, grouting everything underneath the bridge that where yeah. it's been cracking. And they jackhammered for days under there. They cut things off and with concrete saws. And it, it, I don't know. I didn't see the befores, and I probably won't see after. Oh, that's the specialist crew. They're good. Yeah. yeah. They're the bridge crew, and that's mm -hmm. what they do. So, mm -hmm. so there's no depth that I'm just worried about detouring around the backside. Of the no, no, that's not going to happen. Thank you. No, and when you drive across, after their jackhammer and go fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first like comment was: we so all know that the stop. bridge approaching other side of it is um, not to be the greatest thing ever, but it's always it's been that way for mm -hmm. 20 years. That dip mm -hmm. on both sides, and I'm like, oh. Must be they're going to look into fixing that. Yep. Nope. <laughs> so I, I did a bridge inspection at a truck there with the train that went over and underneath, and the yes. bridge inspectors came in and looked at it. And next thing you know, these guys showed up within two weeks. Uh -huh. So that's pretty quick. Yeah. So and the, the, and are they going to do anything about the fact that there's a beaver that loves that nope. spot? They they were gracious last year and dug it out twice, I think with their big excavator and left all those nice marks. And they're probably going to blame that thing being on there, doing that, is what happened to underneath. Sure. I, I will bet money on it. That would be sleeping there at night. Okay, so I am going to ask to circle back when I was oh, down on the topic of all the stuff in aging. I can make this very, very quick. I've got the contract. It's basically the same, except for what I read to you, that I have to do these quarterly reports. So I'm looking to get approval from the board to sign the contract and send it back tomorrow. Would Six someone like to move it? Out. Move. Okay. Second? Second. We love seniors. Yep. Okay. And everybody's in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. I almost forgot that. Okay, next I would like to close the public hearing. So I'm looking for a motion to close the public hearing at 7.59. I'll move that. Okay, a second? Move. Okay. Whatever. Our next meeting will be Monday, May 2nd. And I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I think I will move that. And a second? Second. Okay. Go home and watch your game. Thank you. Mine said, I don't know, that's what you said. I know, I corrected, I corrected these. I do that all the time. Are the Mets, uh, Gary. Oh, there's Gary. Are the Mets winning?